Hey everybody, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 show. Today, I have a very special guest today, and we're going to be talking about love yourself successful, taking charge of your life, stop settling, have faith in yourself, and getting rid of toxic people. So I'm your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 squash the dieter's mentality and lose weight for the last time. If you are a regular to the show, then you know what is going on. If you are new, welcome. And each week, the Shape It Up show comes to you on Tuesdays and Thursdays. On Tuesdays, I give you ways to jumpstart your weight loss journey, whether it's about fitness or nutrition, and most importantly, mindset. And if you want to get even more help from me, I want to invite you to schedule a discovery call with me at shapeitupfitness.com slash call. Then on Thursdays, I am bringing an incredible guest to you each week to help complement all the other areas in your life. So I am so glad you are here spending time with us today, and we're just going to dive right into our topic on Love Yourself Successful. So my guest today is the Jumpstart Your Biz coach, Katrina Sawal. Did I say it right? I think I I killed it. No. (laughs) Katrina helps entrepreneurs create consistent money-making businesses. She is a creator of the Jumpstart Your Marketing System and the Jumpstart Your Biz training series. Tell It Like It Is speaker and international best-selling author with 16 books. Katrina has been featured on the Oprah and Friends, XM Radio Network, ABC, The CW, and the LA Tribune. She was awarded the National Collabor- Collaborator of the Year Award by the Public Speakers Association and is a two-time nominee for the Wise Woman Award by the National Association of Women's Business Owners. And you can learn more um, at her website, Jumps start your biz slash free trainings and katrina will also be talking about other ways you can get in touch with her as well as we go on so welcome katrina to the show i'm so glad to have you here thanks nicole <laughs> all right so let's dive in so katrina tell everyone how you kind of got started and how you built your business so <clears throat> i started I used to be in advertising sales way back when uh, for the local newspaper, and this was 20 something years ago. Okay. And uh, when newspaper was still important. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I started my business in my, when I was married to my starter husband, my first marriage, and uh, thought he was <clears throat> um, more sales and marketing oriented, let's say. Uh, because we met doing door-to-door sales. So we met doing door-to-door sales. He actually hired me and taught me how to do door-to-door sales, which was the craziest nine months of my life. Uh, But so when I started my own business, I thought, no problem. He's more entrepreneurial, right? Because so I I knew I would always want to be an entrepreneur, but I didn't um, know what that looked like. And so when I was in my last J-O-B, um, I hired a business coach and, and she helped me kind of determine what to start, which was more of a marketing consultant back then. Lo and behold, though, it was like a crazy roller coaster of cash flow with that, right? Because most people that start their own businesses have a roller coaster of cash flow in the beginning. And my husband was not happy with that. Like he was very nervous about the money. And, you know, he's more now, like I found out he was more about the security of a regular paycheck coming in. Mm -hmm. And so when we got married and we stopped doing door to door, he got this really consistent job and I had one too, but then I left out into entrepreneurship. And um, once I started learning about what it took to be an entrepreneur, I'd want to, you know, go to workshops over here and I'd want to spend 3000 on this trip and I'd want to hire this mentor for 10000 and this one for 20 And, you know, <laughs> like, like I learned so much and was growing so big, my mindset and what I, my desires changed, my whole outlook on life changed. Yet when I was looking at my husband, he didn't change and Mm -hmm. he didn't even want, he wasn't even interested in like learning what I was doing and wanted to do. So it was a hard time, but he, um, but yeah, that's how I got started. And so I didn't have a lot of support starting my business. I had to figure it out myself that first couple of years. That's really hard when you're with someone who, you know, you feel like should be cheering you on and, and, and supporting you. And it's hard when there's that disconnect for sure. Yeah. And it was just the, um, you know, it's a, goes back to what I call the entrepreneur mindset versus the employee mindset. Mm -hmm. Neither one is bad. It's just 
they're oftentimes they're married, <laughs> right? And you have to learn how to communicate your needs and desires and wants and passions enough so that the other person will 100% support you. Um, and most people don't know how to communicate that way. I didn't. I didn't know then what I know now. And uh, so it didn't go well. Uh, <laughs> we ended up getting divorced. Um, we tried a little counseling here and there. But, you know, when I go out networking events, <laughs> I would go out and everybody was like, how are you, you know, how are you doing? And they always ask you, like, how are you? And I'd be like, oh, it's great. Everything is great. I have a big smile on my face. And then I'd go home and I would literally cry myself to sleep. Yeah. Because we'd be like roommates because we just didn't agree on what our life yeah. was going to look like. Yeah. I think as women too, especially as we get older, we put on that like face of like, mm -hmm. yeah, everything's good. Everything's great. You know, like, and then go home and just fall apart, you know, and not have that yeah. support unless you have a, a, a group of women or a, a support group that you're really relying on. And even then I know for me personally, like that trust factor of like, can I trust this person with this information, you know, yeah. about your personal life? So. Like poo poo all over it. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Or be like, I don't know what you're talking about. You got a great marriage or whatever, you know, or yeah. Uh -huh. Or you should divorce them, you know, whatever extreme you get. <laughs> yeah. And I, I ended up doing that because he wasn't going to support me. It turned out. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'm not, I'm 35 years old at the time. I'm not going to live. I'm not going to settle. Yeah. for someone who's not supportive and I'm not going to live the next 50 years of my life in that relationship where we're not, where there's no affection, attention, and we're just living like roommates. That's just silly. And we couldn't work it out. So we, we, we did get divorced, um, but it was actually the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, and probably him too, frankly, because <laughs> <laughs> he's a nice guy, but we just, we just grew apart. You know, yeah. and sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And I realized a few years later, I didn't realize it in the moment of the transformation, right? We never realize it in the moment, but like a couple of years later, I realized, ah, you know, that was like, quote unquote, a toxic person for me because they weren't supportive. And then I realized the only other toxic person in my life at that point was my dad, who was sup supposedly, the, so this is the thing with people in our lives, our loved ones, either we're married to them or our significant others or our other friends or family or our best friends or our sisters, siblings and parents. I mean, they can say they're supportive. My dad used to say he's supportive, but then he used to, when I would visit him, which was only like once or twice a year, he'd be like, oh, I'm so ha excited for you. I'm proud that you have this business, but how come you haven't lost those extra pounds? Um, or how come you haven't fixed your crooked teeth yet? Like, you know, I'm proud of you, but uh, so but it was a compliment and a tear down mm -hmm. and a compliment and a tear down. And that is not a supportive person. That no. is so, you know, he it's passed like a, a couple of years after my divorce. So at that point I was like, oh, now I'm free. Like, no, I mean, I love my dad, but he was not supportive. And so that was toxic energy to my, to my being. And it hurts your mindset. It hurts your confidence. It hurts a lot of things It hurts your motivation and your in your business or whatever you're doing in your job. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of the things that I teach women who come to me for weight loss in the sense of like, you know, there's always going to be people that are going to say negative things to you. Like if I told you right now, you know, for those who are watching your purple hair is awful. You'd look mm -hmm. at me like, what are you talking about? I don't have purple hair, <laughs> you know? And I think that um, she doesn't have purple hair for those who are listening. Um, I think that we as women have to kind of develop our own self-worth and like our own confidence. So like when, when comments like that come in, they just bounce off of us. Yeah. In this, yeah. I call it having a bubble. You have to put a bubble around yourself. And too many people can't do that. They let the stuff seep in and then it gets into your subconscious and your mind. And then you can't do the things you need to do um, because you have that subconscious negativity going on. And with dieting, um, trust me, I've been around the diet block a few times, right? And if, if you're married or, or living with somebody, that person has to be so supportive and not say, oh, honey, you want a chocolate, you know, or go out and get a bunch of ice cream and bring it home if they're at the store. It's like, 
they have to do either do it with you. Like my current husband <laughs> would totally do something with me if we decided to do something. Cause he, you know, he's a sweet aholic. And I, I tell him and he's the one that goes to the grocery store, but luckily he's, he's good about it. Um, but yeah, if that person is not supportive of you, then it's super hard to keep maintain whatever eating you have to do to keep where you want to be. Yeah, I, I do think it's much easier when people are on the same page. But like you're saying, it's it's typically not the case. The, no. the other person is usually on the opposite page. Um, I know for me, I actually developed a whole workshop called Crush Your Cravings based on the fact that I would have such strong cravings for cream filled donuts. And my husband would bring home, and I'm not exaggerating any stretch of imagination, like six dozen of my favorite cream filled donuts because he would go to the bakery at the end of the day and they were selling everything. Well, someone <laughs> in the heck needs six dozen donuts in the house for exactly, God. Exactly, exactly. And just my total yeah. sabotage. Yeah, but that's like sabotage. Well, his version, <laughs> his version is like he's trying to make me happy because he knows this is what I want. <laughs> you know, in, yes, in theory. That's enabling. Yes. But so this is how the whole workshop came about in the sense of like, I understand that I am in control of my decisions, no matter what anybody says to me. And a lot of times when um, someone says something to me that triggers me or is a negative thought, then I, be- I must believe something that they're saying to me, whether, you know, if they make a comment that, um, yeah, but I'm sorry, bringing donuts into the house when you catch <laughs> your trigger is like, that, that's just the worst self-sabotage thing. Well, it was good practice, let me tell you. And I'm glad I went through it. (laughs) I've been a coach for a long time, okay? So I would say, I wonder if he, and I'm sure you love your husband, I'm sure everything is peachy, but I'm talking to the people who have a similar situation here. And what if they are secretly subconsciously doing that because they know once you lose the weight, then you'll be more independent and then you don't need them. You might leave them. Yes. They've got the lack of confidence going on and it could be self, uh, it could be um, subconscious for them too. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're purposely doing this to keep you where you are. So you don't become this independent, amazing woman that you need, you know, you know, you are. And I've seen it. I've seen yeah. it in clients who become, who are business owners that I've worked with. And cause we talk about their personal lives. We talk about the personal lives and the support system they have and how that plays in with the business. We have to, you yeah. know? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So cause everybody that has is not a supportive person. <laughs> even though they say that, no. And you have to have that communication to educate them and to really go deep with the conversation um, so that they understand that this is hurting you. And you might even have to ask questions of the other person. Do you think, why could you be doing this? Is there some deeper motivation? Is there some deep, are you scared for this? Are you concerned with that? And you just, people don't talk that deep sometimes. No. In their relationships. Yeah. Well, I got to the point where I told him if he continues to do this, that they were go in the trash. <laughs> so, and I did wind up throwing some out. Or I'd let them just go stale and eventually they would throw out. But yeah. My husband so. would never do that. He would never bring in something like that. Um, and so if he wanted ice cream, I'd say, well, go to the ice cream store and go eat it on site and then come home. I don't care. Like, go do that. <laughs> if you want a donut, go eat it at the donut store and then come home. You know, yeah, there's a way around it. I yeah, don't know. for sure. And, but like I said, I'm glad I went through that because I've now conquered my cravings. Like you can put six dozen of my favorite donuts in front of me and I get to choose whether I want to eat them or not. I, I don't know. I don't know how <laughs> many people could actually do that though. Honestly, you'd have to hypnotize people to get it out of there. Like, I mean, you'd have to really try some severe stuff because I mean, yeah, I'm, that's why I don't <laughs> diet anymore. Cause I don't have willpower and I right. just eat healthy. Yeah. I eat healthy. And if I want a treat, I get a treat, but I don't overindulge with the treat. And so I sustain, I've sustained my weight for many years. It's just, you know, other than COVID, maybe COVID did a little, COVID does some damage for a lot of people. <laughs> I know, like, actually yeah. it turned other, it turned some people into exercise mania people and it turned many people into overweight people. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, oh, I was going to say something about, uh, oh, what were you saying? Shoot. Oh yeah. Like my philosophy is no foods are off limits. Like you can yeah. eat, there's no, there's no more diet. Yourself. Otherwise yeah. you, you just go off the deep end in that thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. My thing is like, I have this one chocolate at night, like Ghirardelli 
<laughs> dark chocolate raspberry. Uh -huh. I just need one of those. I need one of those a night with a glass of red wine and I am good to go. I don't have cravings, but I do have cravings when I eat too healthy. When I eat just mm. salad and fish or, you know, yeah. I gotta have my wine and chocolate. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't even want to talk dieting. Are you kidding me? I can't imagine living in your world with about dieting and fitness and all this stuff. Cause it's, uh, it's exhausting. Well, that's why we all have our own zone of genius. I think <laughs> for sure. Yes. Now I know a lot of the women who are drawn to my show are typically successful business entrepreneurs and CEOs. So as a business coach, what are the biggest issues you see out there that business owners are doing that are making them work way too hard or long for not enough profits? Yeah. The biggest thing is doing it all yourself, I think. Um, and especially if you're an independent, confident woman, you're going to say, well, I can do this. Or I've tried delegating and they're too slow or they can't do it good enough. And I just might as well do it myself. I've been there, done that and bought the t-shirt on <laughs> control freak itis. Okay. You've got to stop at that though. You have to, or you will never get to the next level of working less because there's too many things in this world you have to do now as an entrepreneur or business owner. You have to be a master at social media engagement. You have to be a master at web design and, and backend systems and funnels. You have to be a master at marketing and sales. Uh, conversations. You have to be a master. I mean, you have to do so much. You could write a book. You could start speaking. You could do a networking. You could start a membership group. I mean, there's, ah, right? It's exhausting how much you could do. And so I would say you got to build a team and the systems first because that is going to allow you to do and reach more people and make more money without killing yourself. Yeah. 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 Again, I think that goes back to like your zone of genius. You know, I, I'm not great with numbers. So why not delegate that, that to someone who loves doing numbers or someone who loves doing marketing or somebody who loves designing things? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. So what happened for you that made you realize that you needed to talk more about love and money? Nah. So <clears throat> I started my business in 2005. No, two, 2002, 2005 is when I got the divorce and 2006 is when I started really going to a lot of uh, workshops and seminars and hiring uh, coaches, business coaches and things like that. So um, 2006 and seven, I had this coach who was amazing. It was, she was kind of like what I do now, which is mostly practical, tactical. This is what you need to do, da, 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 da all the doing, right? And I got to a certain level. Um, I want to say it was more like almost 90,000 a year. I'd never make 90,000 a year, right? In a job. And here I was in my business, but I couldn't, it's like for a couple of years, I was like in the 80 to 90,000. And I'm like, but I want to get to a hundred, right? So I was like, I wanted to get to a hundred thousand because that's the milestone everybody wants to get to, right? I thought, mm -hmm. oh, it's going to be easy peasy after a hundred, which is not true, by the way, because you, then you need 200 and then you need <laughs> But so after that, was that first couple of years with this one coach, I ran across another coach who swore it was all about the money. Like he could show me how to make a hundred thousand, no problem. And I didn't really know how he was going to do that. Cause I had only heard him speak a couple of times and I hired him and it was 25,000 for this one year with a mastermind group, about 15 people. And they, most of the people in the group paid him a hundred thousand. I paid him 25. So I only got like seven or eight one-on-one -on -one calls that year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I had all the mastermind stuff and the whole year the So I would go to him and the group. Okay, guys, here's where I'm at. Here's what I'm doing. Here's all the things that I'm selling and here's the marketing that I'm doing. And here's who I'm talking to. And this is my brand and la la la. And I'd say, what do I need to do to just up and up a notch? See what I'm missing. Like, what do I need to do to get to that hundred thousand? What do I need to do is the question I was asking. And the thing they would all tell me is you, Katrina, you just need to be you just need to be. And I'm like, okay, but how do, what, how, do, what do I need to do to do that? Like, I don't understand. Like, cause I just tell me, do I need to do more emails? Do I need to do more videos? Do I need to write another program? Do I need to raise my rates? Do I need to speak more? What, what do I need to do? They're like, just be. And I'm like, they're just be love Katrina. I'm like, what the, 
And I didn't understand at the point. And there was a lot of, you know, touchy feely kind of people in the group that mm -hmm. were the woo them there's i would say that half the group was being people and half the group was doing and i didn't really get it because i thought they were just all doing stuff no they were like so all year long i was crying and frustrated because i was like i don't understand what to do and apparently some of that advice and, and know-how or whatever of being slipped in and i was being more at the end of the year lo and behold i made a hundred and something thousand dollars and I found the love of my life, who I thought was going to be the love of my life, mm -hmm. at least. Mm -hmm. So I got love and money at the end of that year that I cried the whole year because I didn't know what I was doing. And I didn't do anything different in my business other than change the way I guess I was being, you know, I don't know how I did it, but that's what happened. And so that was the moment that I was like, wait, so I can have, we can have being and we can have doing so I can have love and I can have money. I'm like, huh. And so that's when I then created, okay, well, I need to write a book about this and da, da, da. And, but before I can, but the book wasn't downloading, like mm -hmm. the content for the book, you know, just doesn't come. You can't force it sometimes. And so I said, okay, so this was January, 2009. I said, I'm going to do an event. I'm going to do an event at the end of 2009 and it's going to be the Love and Money Business Summit. I'm going to figure out how, to, so the content for the event is eventually going to be the book. I'm a practical doer, right? This seems practical. And so that's what I did. The book still didn't come to me because it didn't feel right that the content of the event was the book, but the event was really successful. Um, that's kind of where it started from. And so then I was on this kick with Love and Money. And, but I will tell you that doubt and... Uh, doubt creeped in and my monkey mindset got the best of me because people didn't get it back then. They didn't understand why are you talking about love and money? I don't understand are you a relationship coach. I'm like, no, the love side of your life. And there's four components of the love side of your life. And that's how you make more money is you focus on the love to get the money. And, ah, you know, so I was trying to explain this to people and they weren't getting it. So I wasn't really hitting the mark. I know because you, you were a my pioneer pain. back then. <laughs> my pain right and then so I stopped talking about love and money and I just started about jumpstart your marketing and your business and then somebody else talked, started talking about love and money Lisa Nichols and I'm like oh my god she's like I was doing this before she was doing this I'm like how come like <laughs> oh my god it was so frustrating so as an entrepreneur if you have an idea and you're yeah. just you no know, it's the perfect idea but nobody gets it it was so that's how I've been so I've been kind of shoving the love stuff like the wicked stepchild down <laughs> in my business for the last, I don't even know, 12 years. Right. And it just keeps coming back because people want that. And yeah. so that's my crazy journey. Yeah. And I, I find it interesting too, uh, with, you know, whatever we're doing in our life, they all have the same kind of theme through it. So like for weight loss, it, you know, a lot of it comes down to how, how do you take care of yourself? Do you love yourself? You know, what's going on there. And a lot of things that I tell my clients is, you know, ideally women want this like magical number on the scale. So we're just going to say 125, right. And <laughs> A lot of people or 140. I don't know. Whatever. I'm laughing you're... Because I haven't been 125 since like eighth grade. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on height and all that too, but uh, bone structure. But like it's not the number on the scale that you want. It's the feeling. It's the person yeah. that you want to become. And I resonate exactly with what you were saying in the sense of like being and doing because you have to become this new version of you in order to get what you say you want. Mm -hmm. And if you're not able to make that journey, I mean, that's what I do with my clients is take them from, this is what you say you want. And this is where it is. That's let's get you there. And I I'm sure you do the same exact thing yes. for businesses. Yeah. Um, but it's understanding who is the person that you're trying to become, not the things that you're trying to do. Person. <laughs> Many yeah. People are resistant. I was just talking to someone right before we did this, this recording. And um, it's, it, I'm like, she told me, these are the things I want to do. And I'm like, okay, you can do these, but you don't have a lot of time. You need to put this one off for six months. And she didn't like that advice. And I'm like, because it's not going to bring you the money. You say you want money. These are things you focus on. You don't focus on this over here because that's not going to bring you money right now. I would get the money first and then do that later. And she's like, not 
she's hearing me, but she didn't want to hear me. Like she was hoping I didn't say that. And she probably knows deep down inside I'm right, which I am, but she's not liking it. Yeah. And so it's like that, it's that resistance. If I had so much resistance that one year, they're like, no, just be. And I'm like, the more you be, the more you attract, the more the right people will come. And now that's, it was exactly true. But I was trying to do and chase and market instead yeah. of be attract and, you know. Yeah. Well, and I think that's what we're taught. I mean, if you're an entrepreneur, you, that's, that's marketing. You know, you do all these action steps. But a lot of it is not tapping into like who, who, what's going on inside of your brain? What's going on inside of you? Your brain. Yeah. It plays tricks on you. Ooh. And you'll justify anything. Mm -hmm. Lots of doubt. Lots of fear. (laughs) I remember when I was in the dating realm, Mm -hmm. talk about focusing on yourself, right? I thought, well, I had this previous marriage who didn't work out. And then I had this other quote unquote, who I thought was going to be the love for two years. And then he broke my heart on my 40th birthday. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought, what's wrong with these guys? I got to find the right guy. And lo and behold, I'm like, oh, maybe there's something wrong with you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, oh, maybe I should get some coaching around this. I actually spent $12,000 one year when I was fed up with the dating world. I said, Okay, I'm not hiring a business coach this year. I am hiring dating. So I hired a matchmaking service. I went to three relationship oriented workshops that were 2000 a piece and I had to travel to go to them. Most people would not put in that effort, right? And I put in $12,000 when I said, I am all in to find the Mr. Man of my dreams that year. And six months later, boom, my current husband showed up. (laughs) And now I'm married uh, been with him for nine years and he's amazing and wow. totally supportive and exactly what I needed. That's incredible. That's awesome. So, and yeah. I think most people too, who are listening, who are like hesitant in investing in coaching. I know for me personally, for the longest time, cause I started my business in 2006 and I didn't, I made small investments um, because I was not as nerve. Like I was very nervous about spending that money. Um, but I know over the past couple of years, especially since I've dived into mindset, um, the amount of money I've spent on coaching for myself and to level myself up, I, I, I say, go for it. If you're nervous about spending money on coaching, I'm telling you, it is the best investment that you can do. Um, make sure you're obviously getting a reputable coach, but invest. I know it can be scary. What's like that? I said, I, it's for anything you need help on and it's right. investing in yourself is just as important as your mindset. So if you need to, if you have a lot of fears or doubt, then you may need a mindset coach, right? Mm-hmm. If you want to lose the weight, you need people to help you and you might need to try a few different people. So <clears throat> if you're listening to Nicole and you've already tried um, dieting or these other fitness people or these other nutritional counseling people, you need to try a few different people, right? I've invested, I had, shoot, when I turned like 45, was it? I started getting a lot of hormone issues. Although I didn't didn't know at the time it was hormone issues and I was gaining weight and I couldn't lose weight. I used to be able to go on Weight Watchers and boom, drop the weight in like 30 days, drop 30 pounds. Um, Well, maybe not, but I dropped 30 pounds when last time I did Weight Watchers and then I would try to bring it back. I hope not in a month. No, no, that wasn't (laughs) <laughs> no, but like, I'm sorry, I've got no, that's okay. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I would do work anymore. The thing, the counting points that didn't work anymore. So then I had to seek out some alternative therapists because my, you know, medical doctors wouldn't do anything. They barely even took all the hormone tests that needed to be taken. They're like, no, that's just not proven to blah, blah, blah. Go to a weight loss class. And I'm like, I don't need an effing weight loss class. That's going to just tell me to eat salad. Like, I don't need that. I need like, carbs. I need yeah. someone to figure out what's wrong with what's up with my body. Like, yeah. so I invested probably $10,000 in alternative therapists and nutritionists back then and all these creams and this and that. And I mean, I had all kinds of hormone stuff going on. And uh, it helped a little bit, but it still wasn't the perfect thing. So I keep, I've had to keep investing in all that stuff. It's not the magic pill. It wasn't, you know, and it's just, there's so many different 
people out there that you have, you can't not trust the next person because you got burned from a previous person or whatnot either, um, regardless of what you're hiring for. Yeah. Not just that, but I think anytime you make an investment, you're, you're going to learn something from that. I know I invested in a small program. It was 3000 at the time. And, um, I feel like I didn't really get out anything really (laughs) from it. And I could have looked at that, like, wow, I just blew $3,000 on a course. Um, but as I look back, I'm like, no, I needed to, to spend that money to learn that it's okay to spend that money and not get the exact result that they were promising. But here are the other things that I got from it. Um, so I think anytime you invest, as long as you have the mindset of like, what I'm going to get something out of this because you do have to show up, you know, your coach is there for you, but you also have to show up and be um, committed to getting your return on your investment and whatever you're deciding to put your money into. Yeah. And I would say too, that, um, uh, I mean, I've invested probably $250,000 over the course of 15 years. And um, one, uh, a couple of things, lessons I've learned is I'm not a, I'm not a course learner. So you have to know your learning style. So I no longer buy courses because I'm not going to follow along. I'm not going to, I don't want to take six months to learn something that I can learn in two hours from hiring the person who teaches the course. So I now I hire one-on-one the person who teaches the course. Yeah. They're $2,000 an hour or a thousand dollars an hour or whatever. I'd rather spend two to $10,000 to shorten the learning curve. So I don't have to do all this work over time that I don't have to show up for and put in my calendar. So I agree. Yeah. I hired a one-on-one coach at 15 K and I mean, I made my investment back in, in two months. So like, you know, what are you showing up for anything? Right. It can be business, but I've also hired a personal trainer Mm -hmm. because I, I don't know how much money I've spent in gym memberships and then never would go because I'm not motivated to go, but I had to hire a $3,300 personal trainer because it would set appointments for me and I don't (laughs) let people down. So I don't flake on people. I'm not a flaker. So, um, some people would flake and then they just lose their investment. But I know if I make an appointment, I'm going to keep my appointment. So I had to spend a whole lot more money to get someone to work out with me than to just go myself. Yeah. Yeah. So if you you have to know your weaknesses and your strengths and you have to sometimes pay to play. Right. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree, but I say one-on-one all the way, if you can. (laughs) Because that's the fastest. Yeah, some people are course learners, and they can they will imp- listen and learn and implement, and then you can save money along the way. Great. I'm just I learned that lesson that I'm not because I had ten thousand dollars worth of shelf help, right? So yeah, yeah. But there's also that time factor, like you were saying, like you work with a one-on-one coach. They're they're specifically diving into what yeah. you need, and your time frame is going to be a lot quicker than if you take exactly. a course. So, what are some suggestions you have for how entrepreneurs can have both love? more love and more money in their business? Well, I think part of it is focusing on both in to some degree. Um, some people are going to already have a great love life going, right? If you have a, a great love life, meaning you have a significant other that is totally supportive and you communicate well and you have the right date nights and you have time for each other, I would say that's a good love life, right? Now, your love life is not just your significant other, but it's people in your life, They, you know, uh, and making sure you don't have any toxic people that you have to deal with. Um, and, you know, around the holidays, sometimes you have to deal with everybody regardless, right? So depending on <laughs> uh, what happened to you during the holidays, um, <laughs> but, <coughs> excuse me, um, so there's, you got to focus on that. Some people I know don't have a love life. Uh, like I have a couple of clients who are looking for love right now. So I would say you have to spend at least 20% of your time focused on how am I attracting love in my life? Right. And what am I doing to attract love or how am I being to attract love? Uh, if, especially if they want it, that side of their love. So some people will avoid it 
and say, well, I don't need a man right now. I just want to focus on the business Mm -hmm. or uh, I just want to give back. I'm I'm so happy and we have money coming in with our investments and all this. And so I'm just going to, you know, give away the stuff that I'm, that is valuable in my business. And, and that's not a good idea either because everybody could use more money. Even people who make a lot of money, make more money and do more good with it is what I say. If you don't want to keep it fine then give it and donate it to people. But if you're capable of making more money, because you're, if you could focus more on money, then do more good with it if you need to. But I would also, because too many people are not focused on the money and then they're eating top ramen or they say they can't afford it for certain things. Don't do that, right? That's undervaluing yourself. That's settling. If you say you can't afford it ever, you, you got to figure out how can I afford it? And that means you probably need to make more money. You need to focus more on money, either get a better job or get a promotion or start your own business or do something, but you, you should nobody should ever go through life saying I can't afford it. I know there's just so many people that do. I get it. There's a lot of underprivileged people, but if you can make more money, please don't say you can't afford it. Yeah. I think that, well, there's probably a whole nother episode topic we could talk about with money and especially women and not feeling worthy enough to oh, yeah. accept it and receive it and all that. <laughs> so, which again, everybody would be a, is worthy. Yes. Yeah, everybody. yeah. You're worthy because you just came out and you were born. Your worth is not determined on how much money you make for sure. But yeah. And I think there are some people who think, oh, if I make a lot of money, it's going to turn me into a greedy miser. And, and that's not the case. It just enhances oh, Another thing to think about is I always call it the what if factor, like what if you're, you know, say you're in your forties and you're younger, right? I say younger because I'm 51, but (laughs) say you're in your thirties or forties and you're not focused on the money. Well, you need to focus on the money because, you know, what if something happens to you or your significant other or your kids or your parents where you need to chip in and I always give this example at my events and I say, if you needed to make $10,000 in the next 30 days or so-and-so is not going to get their surgery they need and they're Mm going to die, how are you going to get $10,000? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because all of a sudden your brain's like, okay, let's go to 10. Let's figure this out. Your kid or your husband or your mom is going to die because you have to raise $10,000 in the next 30 minutes, 30 months, 30 days. People come up with these schemes like, oh, I'm going to sell this membership at $50 a month. I'm like, are you kidding me? You don't have time to sell a membership for $50 a month. It gets 10,000 in 30 days. No, that's not it. You need to sell one person at 10,000. Right. That's how you get 10,000 in 30 days or two people at five grand or four people at 2,500. But to think you're going to do more than that is ridiculous. Right. Yeah, or yeah. go raise money. Cause I had uh, two total hip replacement surgeries in 2013 when I was 42, mm-hmm. 42 and 43. Mm-hmm. I had two hip surgeries that year. I didn't think I was going to have to have hip surgeries at 42. That's something you have at 70. Right. right? <laughs> I mean, it is right. Yeah. You see people I, used, I and- used to work in uh, physical therapy, so I'm very familiar with uh, rehab and hip year old <laughs> ailment. I had degenerative osteoarthritis, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. At 42, I needed money. I needed to make more money because I needed to sustain my household while I was recovering from those surgeries. And I also needed to pay for the surgeries, frankly, you know, even my insurance only paid so much. So I had to pay like 5,000 in deductibles that year. So if you don't have extra money and you're not making extra money, how do you pay for things like that? My husband went through cancer the year later, a year Mm. later, my husband, my then fiance fiance, got throat cancer. Mm. he had a year of surgeries and chemo and radiation. He could not work. Now he uh, luckily had a little bit of disability that he was getting. Most people don't have that availability though. If we didn't have disability, we'd be hating it. Mm. He had like 4,500 a month of disability coming in. That's freaking. it was, thank God we had that. Yeah. Okay. But what if you don't? And what if you have to take care of your significant other? Because that happens. So you always have to make more money. Always. Because you never know what's going to happen at what age. And I'm telling you, you can't put your head in the sand. and It's not going to happen to me. Yeah. Well, and also I think on the other hand too, is 
when you create more money, you get to play more too. I mean, I know you touched on two charities and things like that. And yes, absolutely donate. Um, you know, if you go to the church tithe, but it also allows you more freedom to be able to do some of the things that you want to do. Right. You know, yeah, traveling and yeah, I've had, I can't even tell you how many clients I've had that came to me and they want to make more money because they haven't even taken a vacation in five or seven years. Mm. Like you need a vacation. Yeah. I'm sorry. Unplug. You don't have to go to Rome for three weeks and vacation. That's going to cost you $20,000 for your family, but you need a vacation. We all need that mental break. Yeah. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. You have to earn enough to be able to enjoy that during COVID. Oh my gosh. Like we were going stir crazy because we can go anywhere. Right. So like January, 2021, we bought a $40,000 travel trailer. <laughs> okay. And we paid cash. Right. Yeah. Because we could, yeah. because we needed to be able to get away without anybody telling us what we can do and what we can't do. And if we have to wear masks or no masks. And so we bought a travel trailer and we started going glamping more often. <laughs> like it was great. It was a great little getaway. We just did three or four days here and there throughout the year. And it was such, it was such a great thing for our spirits. Yeah. Okay. Our internal my kid was doing homeschooling and then she didn't have to do it anymore. She went in. Right. Um, but she was going crazy because she didn't like, she really tanked mm. at homeschooling because she's a social person. So when, luckily she got to go back to school, but you just never know what's going to happen. You need to make more money so you can provide for your family, what they need, you know, whether yeah. it's a roof and uh, clothes and food or more, we need more than that. We need yeah. more than that to sustain a happy, healthy, joyful life. I'm sorry, but the basics are not enough. Yeah. You have to want more. Yeah. And I think allowing yourself to want more is, is a, is a struggle for most people. You know, they think again, that comes into those expectations and what we were taught, like, you know, some people were taught that, you know, you only have, you, you get what you need and that's it instead of reaching for more. I would say stop. But you have to get someone to, I don't care if you get some hip self-hypnosis, but get that crap out of your head. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It's, you got to get it out of your head as fast as possible. You don't want to be 65 years old and teaching your grandkids that same lesson. Don't do yes. that. Yes. Don't pass that mindset on. It's not healthy. Yeah. That is one of the things I've recently discovered is like, I keep saying one of my missions is to squash the dieters mentality, but you know, it's not just the women that I'm working with that we're squashing it. It's their kids, their grandkids, like the generations after generations, the whole ripple effect of like what you do will affect so much more that's coming. So, all right. Well, I don't know how long we've been talking because I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. <laughs> So we're going to wrap it up. Um, if listeners are interested in finding more about you, where can they go? And if you have a free offer for them, go ahead and let us know about that. There is. Well, I know we're talking a lot about the love stuff today. So loveyourselfsuccessful.com is my book um, page where you can go. It gets to my main website as well, but that's where you'll find a free audio about the four types of love that I talk about in the book. Uh, you can buy the book there if you want. I'm actually relaunching a second edition. So um, it'll be, it's even better. Um, I would definitely buy it from me and not Amazon. It'll be on Amazon, the new edition soon. But um, that way you make sure you get the new version, not the old version. But uh, it's good. I mean, it's really good to help you with that mindset shifting. Whether you have a, a business or you work in a job, it'll be good for either one because it helps encourage you to want more and get rid of those toxic people and really design your life around uh, how you want to live and know you deserve more. So there you can start there. There's lots of business stuff too, for people who are in their own business or want to start their own business. Um, you'd go to the free trainings page on that site. <clears throat> and then if anybody did not get those links, they will be listed below in the show notes or in the comments, wherever you're watching or listening. All right. So we're going to do a quick little speed round. Um, this lightning round is just like random questions that I ask my guests uh, just because it's fun. <laughs> so, I love it. All right. So we always start off with an easy one, cat or dog? Dog. <laughs> we can be friends. All right. We all have had some sort of unique job in our past. 
I've had some crazy ones. What is one of like your least favorite jobs that you've ever had to do? Well, door to door sales was probably the craziest one, but it was the best one for getting me uh, so I could take a no better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is your favorite movie? Um, gosh. I have a worst memory. I always used to say Pretty Woman, but there's so many good movies that have happened since Pretty Woman that <laughs> I don't even know. So I love the chick flicks and I also love the drama police, um, you know, the who done it kind of stuff. Mm. So I love them. I love a lot of different kind of things. Awesome. All right. The last question. If you could pick one inspirational quote that you love, what would it be? I, again, I have a bad memory. <laughs> that I can ever remember is just do it. (laughs) (laughs) I think that fits you perfectly. (laughs) Right. Cause I'm all about the doing and it's like people like, well, I'm thinking about doing this. I'm thinking about doing that. I'm like, oh my God, stop it. Just do it. Make a decision. Right. That is what I think I I say more often, but I don't (laughs) quotes. No, I think that is an incredible quote. Uh, And thank you, uh, Nike, for (laughs) giving us that. Um, All right. So Katrina, thank you so much for being on the show today. Um, Thank you everybody for listening. And remember the next episode will be out on Tuesday. So have a beautiful week. Take care.